welcome to the show that has it all. This is the Betfred Super League. What a game! Champions, challengers, newcomers, leagues faithful, hold on tight. This is the Betfred Super League 2024. There's nothing like league. Yeah. Welcome along to another of our special one-on-one interviews on this week's Eddie and Steve the podcast. As ever, here with the support of Rugby League's major sponsors, Betfred. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Huddersfield Giants announced that Luke Robinson, one of their former stars, will be their head coach for the next three years. Luke is a 40-year-old former scrum half at the club, and this is his first full-time role as a head coach, having twice been thrown in at the deep end when coaches Simon Wolford in 2020 and then Ian Watson earlier this year lost their jobs so it's a massive challenge for him and I'm delighted to say that Luke has agreed to talk to me this week Luke thank you for this how does it feel to be the new top man at the Giants oh look I'm very excited it's um it's an opportunity I couldn't really pass up um I've done quite a, quite a few years the assistant coach and academy coach and sort of earned my stripes and I feel like now's now's the time really I feel like I'm ready I'm sure you are and having been in the hot seat on an, uh, an interim basis twice before obviously this has always been at the back of your mind you you always wanted to be a coach did you? Yeah I think so it's, I went to university sort of the back end of my career because I didn't really know what, what avenue I wanted to go down and I, it was a little bit of a mixed bag what I studied I studied a lot, a lot of it was coaching a little bit was teaching a little bit was down the essence the strength and conditioning route and I never really knew which avenue I wanted to go down but obviously when I started coaching um when I were forced to retire in 2016 it yeah it's, it's always been a passion of mine anyway you know I coached down at my local amateur club Siddle I still do the under 13s there so it's always something that I think I've always known deep down that's what I wanted to do Fantastic. Are you going to carry on with that with the under 13s? Or this is a 24 7 job, isn't it? <laughs> it is a 24 7 job. The parents have pretty much come to me straight away and begged and pleaded and asked me to uh, to stay on. So at this moment in time, I'm, I am still the head coach of the Giants and the head coach of the under 13s. <laughs> wow. Wow. You've got a busy, busy time. Okay. Look, obviously, Sid will know what you can do. What will you bring to the big job? Because let's face it, this has been a difficult and trying year for everyone at the Giants, obviously. Yeah, I think it's, it has been for a few years. If I'm honest, we've had we've had we've had spells and periods within within the last sort of few years. We've had some ups in 2022, in particular. We had a really good year, and we just we haven't managed managed to maintain it. Really, what the one of the biggest things that I need to make sure we get to grip of is is recruitment and retention. You know, you just look around the league. We've got a very good youth system at Huddersfield Giants and we've got players not only players playing in Super League but in the NRL that have come through our ranks and I feel a bit like if 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 the retention and, and, and some structures are put in place that we could keep all them players like let's be honest Jake Ward or Cruz Lehman are, are both playing at, at Wigan um, and, and knocking on the, the England door and you've got Sam Wood in his senior at Castleford Ollie Russell will be going to Wakefield this year with you know and you couple that with Dom Young and, and Will Price who are play, now playing the NRL and we've got a lot of good things going on at Huddersfield we just need to be able to sort of keep keep the players within our within within our system Well that's a, the, the, the big problem for any club when the big boys come knocking and they come and try and pick out the best players on your rota and your roster that's that's the hardest thing I would think to try and persuade them to stay with you and stay where they are yeah, I think so. I think that's look. It no matter what sport you're in, obviously, whether it's football or whether it's rugby or whatever it is, the 
when the bigger clubs with 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 obviously a, a bigger fan base, a bigger stadium, more money, it's, it's very difficult to obviously try and keep all those players. I think well, what we've got to do is we've got to put structures in place that make them feel valued, make them feel loved, make them feel appreciated, and um, and, and want to play for the Giants. Look, we're a very proud club. We've got a, an unbelievable owner. Um, whose moral standing is as is, 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 is good as anybody else's and he's pumped a lot of money in, he's got a love for the club and if we can actually actually keep get that going throughout the club I think we'll be we'll be better for it and there'll be people wanting to stay. And by the sound of things they've got a, a coach who also loves the club. I mean you talk very fondly of the place, don't you? Oh look it's it's he's been part of my 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 life now for I think as I joined the club in at the in November 2007, so it's been yeah, it's been a, a journey with that I've thoroughly enjoyed. I've had some really good times on the field. I've had some really good times off the field as a coach, and yeah, it's a club close to my heart. So it's something that you know we, I want to actually build this club and 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 not only just have success but make have su- sustained success because that's what it deserves. It does, and of course it is, Luke. You don't need me to tell you this. It's a, a giant leap pardon the pun, from shop floor to boardroom, isn't it? But the players seem to be responding to you. It appears so far that they're, they're trying to buy in to what is another new chapter at the club. Yeah, fingers crossed, you know, fingers crossed. It's, we've got, you know, I think it's a really exciting time at, at the Giants. We've got a lot of things going on off the field as well as on it, and we're trying to, we're trying to put things in place that'll that'll help us get better on the field and start challenging the you know the so-called big sides but we've also got things going off the field as well which I think will hopefully make us an all-round better club and I think they can see that um, the players and the, they are really buying into it and the, the one thing that is totally out of your control of course are the injuries that players pick up and dear me uh, injuries have made the job difficult this year haven't they yeah very difficult and that's where we're going to do a bit of an internal review um, um, I like I like the way they like to coach and the way they like to run things. Is I like it to be a collaborative approach. I don't like it just to be a dictatorship. I want the physios, the S and C, the assistant coaches, the people in the youth having an input. And we're going to do, you know, a full review of 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 ourselves, the staff, the playing group, and how we can make ourselves better next year. Because you know, inevitably in in, in in a contact sport, sometimes you can't do much about injuries, but the ones that we could avoid, we need to be avoiding next year. But yeah, we've done it very tough this, you know, only last week, obviously, when we played um, against Warrington, you pretty much had your starting 17 sat on the sideline. So if we can avoid that in future, I think we'll be better. Well, that's what you'll be keeping your fingers crossed and, and hoping for. Of course, we all understand that. Now, you have called Huddersfield a sleeping giant of rugby league. It's been a long time since the club won any major silverware. What, what's your first goal, Luke? Obviously, you want to win trophies, but so do 11 other coaches in the Super League next year. It, it's, a, it's a huge challenge, isn't it? Oh, it is, Loki. You don't go from the you don't go from the cellar to the penthouse within one season. <laughs> um, you know, you know, let's be honest, you. It's I, I really look I really like what OKR have done. I like what they've done. They've slowly built um a successful club both on and off the field and it didn't happen overnight. I think what we've got to do as a club we've got to have realistic goals and ambitions and realise where we are at the moment. Where we are at the moment is we need to be we need to be a club that starts getting in the playoffs first and foremost. I think if you look beyond that, then you're probably not being realistic. For us next year, if we get in the playoffs then we've made We've made big steps forward, um, and it is only the first step on a, in a long road. And we're hopeful that we can continue that and progress from that. But I think, yeah, it'd be foolish for us to to, to look beyond the playoffs at this moment in time. Well, no one knows the club better than you. As you say, you've been there since uh, I think it's 2008. You retired as a player, 2016, then into the coaching ranks, academy coach. You actually led the Giants at the academy level to uh, playoff semi-finals, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We. You know, you know, this is probably one of the things that I spoke about retention and recruitment before that it breaks my heart a little bit to watch Jake Wardle playing for for Wigan and, and Cruz Leeming and, and and other players throughout the league that are playing for different clubs because I feel like the academy lads that came through they, they were part of my journey, it were part of you know, they were with me 
in my coaching journey I was with them in their playing journey and we had a really successful side we we did really well and we we, we actually you know got to the semi-finals and competed against the big guns in you know the likes of Wigan who generally they get to recruit the so-called best kids at you know at, at age 14 when they go to scholarship for for us we've we've done a really good job in as you set up and we just need to like like I said previous try and keep some of them kids well that's the thing you know you say about retention uh, you know and Wigan Wigan can offer the places but they don't necessarily get the chances and you look around the rugby league the super league there are dozens of Wigan players playing in every team it seems to me yeah that's what what you've got with a good youth setup. you know they obviously have a, a very it's obviously a, it's, a, it's a look I've, I've lived there and played there it's a rugby league it's a rugby league town first and foremost everybody wants to be the next Sean O'Loughlin the next Andy Farrell um, they also obviously have a really good scouting system you know a lot of the players that played there in, in recent times Amir Brewer and Morgan Smith is, um, Matty Nicholson they're all Siddle kids they're all from Halifax where I was from and the same happened with them where I, I moved over from Halifax to Wigan and they don't only get the best kids from Wigan, they get the best kids from over in Yorkshire area as well. So, yeah, it's a conveyor belt for them. But like I said, in the, like I said, in the past, we've done a really good job of finding the diamonds in the rough, educating them really well through the youth setup and, and making a lot of super league players itself. And talking to the parents, convincing the mums and dads that Huddersfield is the place to be. Yeah. Well, that's that's the that's the trick in it. That's the idea and. And obviously, it becomes more. It becomes a lot of easier conversation to have with the parents when you've got a successful first team side. So, we obviously want to be built. I think any good club worth its salt is is built around the youth system. It's, it's they're the pillars of your of your side, but it makes it a lot easier if you've got a side that's competing at the top. And you know, that's what we probably need to focus on at this moment in time. Of course, the the season's over for you now. Uh, I'm sure that the planning had begun though, uh, long before the final hoot had sounded on uh, 2024. W- what is your priority? Getting getting new players in and then having a big pre-season push ahead of 2025. Oh look, the, obviously the the first the, the first things I've been sorting out really is with is my staff. We've had a I've got no assistant coach. We're pretty much. We're quite light in coaches anyway, uh, the Giants. So at the moment, I've been doing everything by myself. For the past 10 weeks, I've been the only coach within the first team. So there were, one of the priorities has been getting somebody that I trust, somebody that I uh, I think I'll add value. Getting my staff in place has been probably one of the, the, the key things that I've been looking at. And then regarding the playing roster, yeah, we, we, I'm in a bit of a difficult situation really because I've come in so late. You know, the likes of Ulkiar, the likes of Wigan, you, you know, you, they're talking about 26 at the moment, 2026. We're still trying to deal with 2025. And I think, um, yeah, what what we have at the moment is is pretty much what I've, what I've got. It's my job to make the players, the group, the team better. If we can add some, some new players to it, it'd obviously freshen up and make us a lot better side. But... I don't think it's that easy. I think it'd be a case of actually some players might have to move on for that to happen. Yeah, I think what you're saying is you're a little bit behind the eight ball eh, regarding the new signings. I think you actually already said as much because of, of yeah. the late appointment for you. A little bit, yeah. And it's just the nature of the beast. And, look, you know, it's the, we've got a lot of good players within our squad. And there's a lot of good players that I think we can, we can be better as a team next year. You know, keep a lot more players on the field and fit. Um, and have a little bit more harmony within the group I think we can be a lot better for it but and the players that we're bringing next year obviously got Burgess Sutcliffe uh, King uh, Wolford I think they'll make us a better outfit anyway uh, and then probably be, yeah, it's more about looking forward to the 2026 then after that Well the talent's there and of course it has been there before you've got some some big names going the other way though aren't you uh, haven't you uh, Luke Yates already at Warrington Chris Hill uh, Ethan Masters in his senior Ollie Russell Adam Milner Kevin Nagama Magam- they're all off as well I think you're in for a busy old winter Luke yeah I think we are yeah but do you know what um, I'm excited by it and I, I've said before to the playing group that I've got I think we can be a lot better uh, we have we have obviously got a lot of players moving on we've got a lot of experience that we've got to 
Um, we've got to fill really got to fill that void because there's a lot of not only really good good players there but a lot of experience so we've got to fill that void but I think these these players within our within our group like Savoli Wilson that can are starting to come into the prime that can actually fill fill them leadership roles so it's yeah it's going to be challenging um, but at the same time it's it's a good opportunity and I'm excited by it I'm sure you are and you've got a great owner as you've already alluded to in Ken Davy. he's a thoroughly decent man isn't he yeah look he's honest as the day is long and look hopefully he's appreciated that from me as well you know I've always been very honest with him about where I think the club needs to go where it needs to change what what we're doing well um, and like I said before if we can if we can have a bit of his moral standing if we can get that going throughout the club um, that honesty hard work and dedication to, to the Giants then I think we'll all be better for it and he has said that you have enormous potential that must make you feel very proud oh yeah look it's look it's, I'm very very proud to um, to be to be leading this this club that's steeped in history you know with a with the founders of rugby league where it all happened is in the Huddersfield and and we're very proud of that fact and we feel like Ken sort of poured his heart, soul and money into the club. So not only for him but the very I know we're we're not in we're not big in numbers but they are in in loyalty to the fans as well and the people that are associated with the club. So it'd be great for him, for the fans, for the club if we can actually bring a little bit of success to the club and now I'm not naive in thinking that's going to happen overnight. I think it's going to be a, a bit of a slow burner and something we need to build towards. But if we can start making those steps next year, then great. And the future looks really rosy because uh, Ken Davy is reportedly thinking of building a, a new stadium for the club in the town, a bit smaller than the the one that you're in at the minute. Yeah, look, it's, 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 it's no secret really that we don't fill the stadium. We, we're, we're never selling it out. The atmosphere... Like I said before, although our fans are really loyal, they all sing their hearts out. It's just too big for the for the, the fan base that we have. Um, it's twenty four thousand, the twenty five thousand seater stadium. It's all blue and white. It's all um, it's all um, Huddersfield Town colours. They've they've invested a lot of money, and although the facilities are second to none, we really don't spend that much time there. We get there for game days. We play in the stadium, which is magnificent, and we leave and we don't see it again for another two weeks when we play at home. So, for us to actually have a have a stadium that we call us home, where we can actually create an, an atmosphere, I think it'll be way, it'll be beneficial for the for the club, the, to the fans, and everybody else involved. It's exciting times for you. This it really is, and you know, talking of the potential that uh, that Ken Davy has. Um, just went a bit sour this year. Third place finish 2022, as you've alluded to. Challenge Cup final that year as well. Run to the Challenge Cup semi-finals this year. Blimey, you know, the margins between success and failure, they're so small, aren't they? Yeah, they are. That's professional sport. Those those sort of marginal gains that you're about in cycling, it, they they apply both in rugby league as well. You know, the the difference between the, the, the top and the bottom is, is minute, but then my new things are, are really important. You need to get them right. And it's it's not one thing or, or two things. It's an accumulation of lots of little things. But if you can put them all together, they, they equate, what they equate to is something, you know, you end up lifting a trophy at the end of the year. So we're doing as best to try and put them little things into place. And hopefully we'll see we'll see the start of it. I don't think it'll be the end next year, but it'll, it'll we, hopefully we can see the start of those little things being put into place next year. And it's all what dreams are made of, Luke. You know, that, that's the whole point. Look, we, we, we've talked about, so far, the future and the present. Let's look at your history and what was a truly tremendous playing career. Yorkshire-born, you were at Siddall when Eric Hawley spotted you and signed you up for Wigan, I think. Yes. You signed for them at 11. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, it's crazy now when you look at <laughs> Blimey, you've been there all your life. What a great eye for talent Eric Hawley had, and not just because he spotted you. No, the fact he, um, well, really, he used to have um, one of his players come and watch me every now and again that he signed originally with Jason Robinson. I actually got a, I actually built up a little bit of a relationship with Jason because he was one of his boys that he picked from Leeds. So obviously, you could imagine me being 11, 12, 13 year old when Eric used to come and watch me still, and he'd bring along Jason Robinson with him, which 
were amazing for myself. But yeah, they signed me at 11 year old, and a lot of clubs at the time were throwing a sort of was throwing money at kids at a young age to, to sign them. But what they realised after a while, that wasn't the way to go. It was the way to go was actually put scholarships in place because I was probably one of the lucky ones that actually did make it. But there were two, three, four, five other players signed at the same time. That that kid that were big at 11, 12 year old were no longer big at 16. So I think professional clubs realised that you were having a little bit of a stab in the dark. And although there were talented players at 11, 12 year old they wasn't always making it. I think me, Gazok, Sean O'Loughlin were were some of the lucky ones. But there were a lot of, there were a lot that sort of fell by the wayside. So rugby league, not just Wigan but other clubs realised that that probably wasn't the right way um, to correctly ID young players. But for me, look, I, were, I went to Wigan. I had one of the best sort of groundings that you could have. My dad used to drive me over. I trained with the young lads and it really brought me on and obviously I was very lucky to go over there and live over there at 15 year old 16 just so I was leaving school and I sort of went from there really it did and you, you were a Wigan fan as a youngster I understand you're making your first team debut for them at 17 that was in 2002 now I'm going to have a stab in the dark here it was Kevin Brown and you in the halfback roles that day wasn't it and didn't Kev get the man of the match award off Stevo? didn't he buy him a watch himself well he says he bought him a watch I'll never believe it is that <laughs> have I forgot that right I think it might have been that year there were me there were a few of us that sort of made that debut that year there were me Sean O'Loughlin I think Stephen Wilde we had we had a few players that sort of played that year and, and, and did really well um and yeah, it were, well, there's, there's a conveyor belt of, of, of talent that came through at Wigan that, that always does. And we had a really sort of good young batch of kids that came through at a very similar time. So yeah, it were really exciting times. It were, against Warrington, I made my debut. We, we ended up beating Warrington. And yeah, a very, very proud moment for me. And people have likened your style as a player to that of Andy Gregory. But I, I think you've actually modelled your career on one Adrian Lamb, didn't you? Because you shared the halfback role with Adrian at Wigan at that time. Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say I wouldn't say shared. It was more Irish understood. He's <laughs> apprentice, and, and it, it was great for me with Adrian because he's a look. He's a, he's a highly intelligent, as you can tell now by what he's done with Lee. Really intelligent rugby player. It was great for me to actually be with, be under his tutelage. And 2003, he was the one that got injured, and it opened a door for me in the in the the later end of the season at the moment in 2003 I was coming off the bench and playing the hooking role and giving Terry Newton a little bit of a rest either side of half time but in the back end of that that year Adrian got injured unfortunately and I ended up playing in the grand final in 2003 um, so I wish at the time probably looking back I were only I'd just gone 19 year old and if I'm honest I'd probably still learn my trade a little bit and he'd probably been better for the side if he'd have stayed in and I'd have still been coming off the bench but the way it worked out yeah I, I, look I got an opportunity I'm never going to say no No it's funny the way these things happen isn't it <laughs> and here you are now one of Adrian Lamb's opposition coaches yes. in the Super League blimey Yeah and he's, he's, he's somebody that I still sort of speak to on a I, I, not regular but I'm going to try and do that you know after the last game he spoke to me about if I want to be up for a coffee and, and just have a bit of a chat about things so it's something I'm definitely going to take him up on I'm sure you will uh, you, you know your playing history le- reads uh, Wigan Cass Salford and Huddersfield you were at Castleford on loan I think uh, then Wigan let you move permanently to Salford there were some unhappy Wigan fans back then uh, they didn't want to see you go if I remember rightly yeah look it's these sliding door moments and and I say I talk about this to every young kid that listens that rugby league's about opinions, and sometimes people have different opinions. And Mike Gregory at the time was my former academy coach. He became the coach in 2003, took us to a grand final in 2003. Uh, got me in his office, told me that he sat me down and said that I was part of his plans moving forward. Um, obviously he got extremely ill did Mike yes I know subsequently passed away which obviously heartbreaking and sad because he was just a champion bloke really good coach but really good fella a real sort of father figure father figure to me in rugby league terms Um, and then the next coach came in and decided that I wanted his plans 
Um, the, he deemed that there were a couple of young lads coming through in the ranks that he thought had surpassed me eventually. Um, and it's just his opinions. So I decided to, to make the move to, to Salford where they guaranteed me I was going to be the starting scrum half playing each and every week and at nine I think I was 20 year old at this point to be a starting scrum half with a pretty much team based around you at 20 year old I thought right well if I'm not part of your plans I'll be part of somebody that wants me Good on you good on you and after that it was Huddersfield and you have been there ever since England International uh, 2010 Four Nations against the Aussies New Zealand and Papua New Guinea and around about that time I think Kevin Brown was again we're going back to Kev was in the England setup as well and if I remember rightly when we were talking about the England setup in those years you two were being viewed as the England international halfback partnership of the future weren't you yeah it was a little bit and it, I saw mine were a little bit last minute I um, the call didn't come till late and I'd, I'd pretty much arranged to, to marry me well my now wife my girlfriend at the time in Cyprus with 40 I think they were about 47 and my friends and family in Cyprus, I was supposed to go on a stag do to Vegas and I got an England call, so I had to have a, a an awkward conversation with my father-in-law and my wife saying, I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much all my friends and family went to Cyprus for my wedding without me and my friends <laughs> went to Las Vegas on my stag do without me and I went over to Australia and New Zealand. And yeah, I probably wasn't meant to be the scrum half at the time and originally I... I got myself an opportunity on the bench against the uh, New Zealand Maoris. Uh, again, coming on at the, the hooker role. I came on, did extremely well in that. Got myself on the bench for the New Zealand game. Did Again, did extremely well on that. And then for the rest of the trip, uh, the, the Papua New Guinea uh, game and the Australia game, um, they started me at Scrum Half. Um, so I sort of earned my way up to Scrum Half. And look, I'm really proud of what I did in that tour. You know, I, I thought I did me, I quit myself really well. I think I might have got play, England's player of the tournament, so probably one of my proudest moments is that. And um, obviously the 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 um, the sacrifice of Cyprus and Vegas, it was worth it, eh? Oh yeah. Well, my wife, <laughs> my wife knew. We, in my family, it's been a bit of a saying, you know, my mom and I've missed me, I've missed my sister's wedding, I've missed my own <laughs> wedding. <laughs> and my mom's words to my sister and to my wife is, rugby comes first. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it certainly does now, Luke, in uh, 2024. Here you are, the new head coach of the Giants. Your dream job, as you said previously, it's not all about you. It's about the players that you've got yeah. under your wing and making them better as players and as importantly as individuals. Oh, look, yeah. I've said all along that coaching's, coaching's not about me. Coaching's about... I just I just love making players better. I love helping. I love teaching. Um, and for me it's about making the individual better if the individual comes into our system and whether he likes me or not whether I've been picking him or I haven't been picking him hopefully he goes away hopefully he goes away with um, knowing that I've tried to make him a better player um, and subsequently hopefully making the team better and if I can do those two things then obviously we're better for it Absolutely look history tells us it's a, a long long time since Huddersfield won major silverware okay 2013 the league leaders shield but the last of the club's championships came in 1961 62 the last of the challenge cup wins in 1953 so what do you think the end result looks like in 2025 oh look you know in an ideal scenario we uh, we get the league leaders shield we win the challenge cup we win the grand final <laughs> yeah. and we win the World Club Challenge, the subsequent, you know, the next year, but sounds good. Sounds yeah, good. it does, and that's what. Look, anybody who actually wants to compete and do well in, in in professional sport, you should always have aspirations to win. The realistic goal for us is, like I said before, is getting in the playoffs. If we manage to take ourselves from ninth to six, then we have jumped up a considerable amount of teams. Because when you look at the sort of the look of the recruitment of a lot of other clubs is going to be a lot of clubs that are better for it next year Hull will be a lot better next year Hull KR look like they'll be even stronger Wigan will be stronger St Helens look like they'll be stronger so the clubs around us are, 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 the clubs are in the league everyone seems to be getting better so for us it's just, it is literally about just trying to get in them playoffs Luke we wish you all the very best for the three year ride that lies ahead 
Uh, you're one of the game's good guys. I, I, I don't want to make you blush. Uh, a really nice fella. And Steve O and I have always had a lot of time for you. And thank you so much for spending your valuable time week. with me on the podcast this week. Oh, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate the support over the years as well. And, and uh, fingers crossed we have a good one. I'm sure you will. Thanks, Luke. All the very best to you. Thanks a lot. So there we are, Luke Robinson. Let's wish him all the very best for his uh, new role at the Huddersfield Giants. And the podcast, Eddie and Steve-O, the podcast, will be back again next time when we will have a special grand final preview for you. Until then, it's thanks again to Luke Robinson and to all of you out there for your company. <laughs>